Mm. Aloha kako. Welcome to tonight's show of Kanakanology. Um, we are so pleased this evening and honored to have Anake Ipo Nihipali with us tonight. Um, she's a prolific artist and um, talented person who has been blessing Lahui with all, um, many ways throughout the years. And so we're so honored and thankful to you for joining us tonight to share with us about your mo'olelo. Mahalo. Hui. Aloha. Aloha mai. Um, I gotta just open up. Mahalo kia kua, mahalo na amakua, mahalo na kupuna, mahalo na opio, mahalo na keki ukaena o hane noa. E aloha mai ke alo. E aloha mai ke kino. E aloha mai ke ola pono. E aloha mai ka ohana loa. E aloha mai ika ipo. E aloha mai ka ua. That's written and gifted to me from Teresa Bright. Mm, <laughs> mahalo. Mahalo, mahalo. So oh. mahalo cousin Kumu. <laughs> <laughs> and mahalo to your assistant, Ea. Mahalo for inviting me and my my um my puvai, my my darling, my husband, my my uh, 57 year <laughs> eight, 52 oh. married together. Um my soulmate and everything. So Mahalo for inviting us to share mm -hmm. Manao Eo with all of you and Mahalo to all of you out there. Mahalo Aloha Kako and Aloha Ahiahi. I uh, hope everybody is safe from this epidemic or this COVID-19 and um, you folks are all taking care of yourselves, especially you kupuna out there and um, being a little bit more makaala with what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. Mahalo for having us for this Kanakanology. Yes. That's a cool name. <laughs> so cool. I think it's a wonderful thing that you're connecting us, you know, to uh, to share a manao. You know, yeah. Um, been pretty much on this journey all my life. I'm reached the seventies already. So wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're in our 70s now. I mean, oh, we've been out there in the movement for years and years and years. And um, Kaui and I are, are, are uh, cousins. We're actually cousins, not the distant kind cousins. <laughs> my, my tutu lady, Alice Hakalaliponi Apoaki from Maui, and um, tutu Luther, who was living on Big Island, yeah? That's yeah. your, your tutu. Oh. Well, yeah. they, they're first cousins because their parents, mm -hmm. Raymond Hoe, Luther's father and my tutu lady ya mima akahia kuliana their brother and sister mm -hmm. so that's part of our mo'okuao how right. we go back with um all our uh oh my god we, what, what the umiali loa all of kahikili nui ahumanu all of that line uh, from maui to um uh, mokuoke ave and uh, you know, our line is really extensive. Um, both my parents are from Maui, um, born and raised there. My mom's a Lahaina girl, uh, Christine Kanani, uh, Kanani Olele um, uh, Kauaki. <laughs> and my mm -hmm. father, he has an English name, but he's, he's Hawaiian, is Joseph Haole Dawson from Punene Paia side. Wow. So, yeah, and then they mm -hmm. took us over to, um, Oahu, I was born in Wailua uh, until I was two, uh, born and raised on Oahu. Um, uh, raised uh, till I was two in Wailua. Um, and then we were taken up to, uh, I, have a, I had a brother, an older brother that's three years older than me. He passed away not too long ago. But uh, it took us up to Wahiwa and um, that's where I was raised up in Wahiwa, country girl. Mm. Work in the pineapple fields, all that kind of thing. <laughs> but our parent, but um, my father was a policeman, and for thirty years, um, and became a, um, a private a detective and a private investigator. And they used to call him the pineapple cop. Oh, 
<laughs> anyway, my, but um, my mother loved to uh, sing and dance. She was, uh, learned from uh, Emma Sharp, all that family, yeah. In fact, our line goes back to uh, uh, Yolani, uh, Yolana, Luahine. Yolani, Luahine. Yeah, Luahine, look here. Yeah. I get mm -hmm. speech deficiencies <laughs> <laughs> age catching up. Sorry. <laughs> Malie, oi. Malie. <laughs> Yolani yeah. Luahine is our Ohana cousin mm -hmm. to us. She's a make cow. And um, Kaui, you remind me so much when you dance and you only, uh, I just, I'm in awe of mm -hmm. you, and I'm so proud of you that you kumu now. And, Thank um, you. We, we've Mahalo. we've studied under Antipua, but you know, um, and we, from Kalai Makavala with us for mm -hmm. one day, and then we expounded out on our own. We branched out on our mm -hmm. own because mm -hmm. we're given the tools from her, her knowledge and her manao, and then going out on our own and branching out, and then um, our journey was was touching everything that we needed to do right the hey I mean going out there and and um and picking up um doing our uh, following our destiny mm -hmm. pretty much yeah the career mm -hmm. that was calling us to do what we needed to do mm -hmm. and um so oh god there's so much stuff that I <laughs> Kunani he's so cool because he he tries to organize me so I don't get all over the place you know um, well, my mother was a uh, red carpet room for United um, and retired, but um, we lived up there for many years and, and I, I graduated from a country school, um, um, went to elementary school there, Kala Elementary School, Wahio Intermediate, down Lelihua, I'm, I'm a mule, oh. <laughs> green and gold, <laughs> green and gold up there. <laughs> hey, but I know how to work, girl. Yeah, get in that pineapple fields and pick pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> I had very humble growing up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I know how to work hard. Um, but the thing is, you know, I never knew that we we were um, uh, middle class. You know, I, I didn't know what that was all about. I didn't know what it mm -hmm. meant, you know, because uh, Kunani he came from humble um, beginnings. But we were raised around multinationalities yeah, around us, Japanese, uh, Korean, Chinese, um, Hawaiian um, families and, and holidays around us. And we had a lot of military bases all around Wahiwa. So I, I, had a, I had a combination of different nationalities. So I didn't know anything about racism. I didn't know about the, cl the classes that we had. Um, um, all I know that my father, uh, my mother had aloha for everybody. I was raised that way uh, humbly. And um, it, my father would always instill in me, it's better to give, you know, than to, to receive, you know. So he was always outgoing. So what he did was he created these art classes um, in, in the community because his forte was was art. He's my he's my mentor, my father. I had art around me all the time. My mom was into. They both cooked, you know. So I had to. Uh, I I picked up. It's it. In those days, um, it was a lot of watch, look, and listen. Pay attention. You you know. Um, he taught everybody else, but for me, it was watch, look, and listen. There's four of us. I have a, a, a older brother two years older than me, he passed away. And then I have a younger brother, two years below me. And then I have a younger sister who's eight years from my younger brother. But those other two below me are still living. So it's just the three of us. And um, I was the only one that picked up the arts from my father. And I had to watch, look in this. And even though, you know, he gave me um, broken, um, you know, dried out tubes, I had to go cut them open and, you get the paint out and then the, the brushes all are pala hair already, but I may do it what I had. And I uh, I never thought I was gonna be, you know, follow my father in, in a sense, but I kind of expounded on that and I helped uh, assist him in arts. And um, that's kind of pretty much my my formal training. I'm a grassroots artist. Um, I, I, um, um, there's a lot of things that, um, you know, I had picked up from my father. Um, by helping him assist him teach. And uh, it, was, uh, it was an ongoing thing. And to me, whatever media that I could get, my forte was, uh, first we did oils. 
And then he said, um, you know, that's going, we better get away from that. I, I discovered a, that was when acrylics first started coming out. Uh, acrylics is a water-based paint and you, and um, oils start to be toxic. Yeah. Cause you gotta be, you gotta use linseed oil. You gotta use all this kind of uh, turpentine, wash your brushes. And that was the old, old school kind of thing. But my father taught me old school. It's just like, um, let's get into acrylics. It dries faster and, and, uh, and I did, it's a water-based paint. Um, and I, I, uh, I really studied under how my father was teaching his students. And a lot of times he would just grab their work and then he'd show them how to do that. And, and some students would get all, all bent, yeah, because, oh, why is he touching my work? Cause, but he was actually teaching them, you know? So um, it's just, uh, it, it, I'm I'm totally grassroots. Um, I I I've uh, my passion is is uh, technique. I love to read technique. I love to um, uh, discover how to use the tools, you know. And I and that's how I teach. I I teach you from the basic what I experienced through my lifetime, and I teach you how to come uh-huh. forth, bring out. What you what you holding back from inside, or maybe you get stuck, you know, from a blank paper or canvas to something just yeah. dimensional and beautiful. And so um, um, that's pretty much where I, I got my um, my background with my my art. And and uh, my father taught us many things growing up. My mom too, but you know, it's mainly, they loved everybody and um, having art schools at our house in the, in the patio, in the garage, wherever my father could teach. He was out there in the community constantly. And he even taught in the, uh, the police department and, and hospitals, wherever he could go. And I pretty much, you know, um, paid attention to all of that. Just like, um, you know, you go play the ukulele, you play the piano, yeah, you start learning the keys where to stay or, you know, and then you figure it out. So I was like, what, that I play by ear, you know, <laughs> and, um, uh, but my heart was there and, and uh, I miss my father a lot, you know, I, I really miss him because he told me, he says, when he passed away, in fact, um, you know, he, he gave me a lesson in, uh, of his passing. Uh, and I think everybody, when, when you see your kupuna or your parent or family, when you're there and you see them passing uh, and, and their whole body changes, they, they're good teachers, you know, pay attention to that. And he says, you want to see me, you got to paint. <laughs> you got to do your art. <laughs> you want me to come visit you, you got to do your art. So wow. he's in my, he's in my, in my EK, my whole Lona. Um, so when um, uh, she's, I better get back into it. <laughs> oh, sorry, I like share that real fast if you don't mind, the Ki, oh, yeah. Uncle. This is the picture your folks had shared. Oh yes, nice. Oh yeah, my my father. That was a special. Yeah, that's when I, I was slim. I think. <laughs> My hair, oh my God. That's my dad. He's painting the thing. Yeah. You know, we we spend a lot of time together. You love it when we're we're both together painting. Yeah. Yeah. That was special. That that was his gallery that he was at. Yeah. Yeah. How old was he at this time? He was in his 80s. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is 2010. Yeah, he was wow. In he lived to he was a survivor of pancreatic cancer for eight years. Yeah. Pancreatic oh. cancer. That's why he lost so much. And he, he was losing weight and stuff like that. But he my dad is just he's brilliant. <laughs> his, his t-shirt, the Mamo. <laughs> I oh, <laughs> Mamo, yeah. Maui arts. Yeah. Hi. Um the thing is, I was on the first wave. They finally recognized us native Hawaiian artists, I think. Hiko Ula uh, Hanapi, mm-hmm, he, mm-hmm. he nominated me and a, and a group of them um, uh, and said, oh, Ipo, you got to be one of the, um, nom- you're nominated as one of the Outstanding Lifetime Achievement Award artists. And I, I was with Herb Kane, uh, 
Rocky Jensen, Michael Anikalehele, and um, Rubalai. Um, let me see what's her name. Uh, I was with uh, Auntie Mary Lou Kekueva and, mm. um, and who is that? Uh, see, look at my queen already. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't get her name. Lee. Oh. Um, oh, yes. Auntie. Oh, how dare she gonna she'll listen to this exactly. She was doing a kappa in the lace. Yeah, too. she's empty. She lives Big Island too. How can I forget her? Easy. We 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 losing our <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> empty. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. oh, Auntie Marie McDonald. Yes. yes, Marie yes. McDonald. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh god. <laughs> I think so is her too. To the the end. 70s, what yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's happening. Anyway, there were six of us, but I said, wow, who came first? The chicken or they? My father wasn't recognized. He was, he was on that level with Herb Kane. And um, so he came on the second wave, which was 2007. Mm -hmm. I got mine in 2006. So that we, we tried to keep, keep that going to perpetuate that, that uh, entity uh, with the mamu. But then, you know, it's, it's starting to change. Uh, every time I would try to nominate the next artist because we were in the movement. We were like the dinosaurs in the beginning yeah, of time. My, mm -hmm. my father inspired me besides Kunani. Um, I, I got um, married at a young age from when I was, um, I mean, I did art all the way from grade school, all the way, I always had art. But when I was about 18 or 19, my father would encourage me to go, he was the, sitting on the board at the uh, zoo fence where they have all this artsy yeah he was <laughs> at the yeah little, little zoo fence you know yeah. where all the artists yeah. well, my father was one of them. It, it's tourist art and so i got involved with the tourist art over there for a few years and uh, kunani would take me down and my father kept saying oh you're gonna do this i had to do the all this tourist art and I'm like ah oh. Okay, 50 paintings a week, you know, I mean, little ones, whatever I could do and sell my art, made a little bit. And it really helped because we were, you know, young um, uh, married couple. And that would really help us. And um, so I'd go every Sunday, I think it was every Sunday. Yeah. And so that's when I, you know, get into it and all. And then we got, we were introduced by my cousin, my um, uh, Sito, Duncan Sito, he lives now on, on um, the island in Hilo. And he encouraged us to meet this group that called Halen Awa, mm -hmm. uh, Rocky Jensen and Lucia. And so we, we were with them for about six, seven years or so. And um, <laughs> we graduated <laughs> from that. But it was really good because in a sense, we learned uh, how to um, change that whole um, a concept of just tourist art into historical pieces, like our culture, learning about who we are as Kanaka Maoli. And so it really got me more in depth with, with what I needed to do was to find my, you know, to get down into my mokua how and, and who am I really deep down inside, yeah, besides, um, you know, I mean, it, I think Kalai Makavalo came after that for a mm -hmm. while. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. that kind of even strengthened me even more to open up more. And then um, in things that we got involved in in the community, um, in the Kaho'olawe, um, we were more busy with the Halenawa um, at that time when Kaho'olawe was going. And they, and Emmett kept asking us, come, come, come over to Kaho'olawe. But my, um, uh, unfortunately, my tutu, when she was alive at uh, at the Alice, uh, tutu Alice, tutu mm -hmm. lady just said, "No, you you cannot go there," and there was, she had her reasons, and so I had to abide by that. So that it was like a couple for me. Um, anyway, that's the kind of stuff you gotta listen to because you know uh, she's real protective. My kupuna have always protected uh, me, and um, and through my art. I, I need to, all, all the way, all along, I always connect to my mokuaha. I always go to my, my kupuna and I ask permission. I ask them, guide me through this journey that I need to go before I do a painting, before I do a piece, because I don't like the um, 
something, you know, mahaoekain or whatever, you know, I, I try to stay focused. Okay, this is where they're guiding me. It's okay, go through there. And I ask permission first. I don't just go and delve into it. And, and sometimes my pieces are pretty intense and strong. Um, I've done many pieces like the, um, I think, I think you have um, Hokaipo, the night marchers. Yeah. I well, yeah. Can I share? I share? have that. Yeah, I have that. I have, I have uh, the Luokini. I have Kahikili Sleep. Yeah. That's Kahikili yeah. Sleep. Yeah. That's, that's on. Ooh. Yeah. Maui. And so we have to show these kinds of things that, you know, pretty intense. Um, a lot of times, in fact, the legislature, they introduced me, we were all getting awards, and they introduced me as Mr. Ipo Nipali. <laughs> Because they, they think I'm kind yeah. But you see the man, you see on the top of the, the very peak, there's a man's face on the top too. They, it comes as they come, you know, his yeah. warriors are on the top, but he's laying up and looking right up at the sky. So yeah, they come yeah. as they come, yeah. And so he's showing the lelikava to be able right. to manipulate the wind. And, and without any, his kaikili was, he, he was fearless, he had no, fear in his you know he's cut out half half, half uh, of his body and one side could mean life the other side could mean death mm -hmm. and not every, and not anybody could have just approach him like oh hey mm -hmm. how's how are you doing you know no 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 cousin what is the size of this what is the size of this what is this about pretty much about four by six yeah four feet by six, six feet. Oh, yeah. Ooh. yeah it's kind of a it's a big piece Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's the colors are more rich than that when you see that. Yeah, but that's, yeah. Not yeah, it's not really. The, yeah, it's where, so when you, where does the it place, reside now? You know, it's, uh, I, I gave that, I wrote that out to, as an anniversary gift to my parents, but it came back to me. So I have the original. Yeah. Wow. A lot of my, yeah, my, a lot of my originals. Um, I I been actually trying to make try to scan these so they I can make them affordable um, right. as you clays, you know, as copies and stuff. But um, we're documenting my pieces to, mm -hmm. to probably could not even make a book out of it. And this is this is the I I went up to Bumpy's Village in Waimanalo and we had a workshop there. Um, they wanted me to, it was under a grant that Kudani had, you know, he was a part of. And they invited me to um, teach the, the village, all men, women, and children. So a whole bunch of us, we all signed the tarot leaf on the bottom there. And they never painted before, never, ever. And I taught them techniques. And, and so there's a chant that Auntie Pua wrote up inside there in that, right underneath that imagery of the, um, Male and the Kane and Wahine, and it was mm. beautiful. And, oh, I forget what the thing, but it's a huge piece. So I taught them um, techniques, and then we went in and and they painted. It's on canvas. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And they're so proud of that of that painting, you know. That, you know that they they canvas. So that's why Manalo, and it shows all the different that that Ahupua what all the things that change from the pristine water down into the, you know, the mosquito larvae, the rats, you know, things that leptospirosis, the contaminated mm. water, the strikers, uh, they wanted to put the striker, the military coming yeah. in mm -hmm. and the protests and, you know, and how important it was to bring back the water clean again and, Mm -hmm. you know, and um, bring back the oopu and, and the children. There's a there's a bunch of the children down there, the portraits of children that this one girl put there too. So a lot of things. And and uh, I know there's a there's a uh a, 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 of healing too that's up in there too in the village. Yeah. So all of that, you know, just that whole concept where people need to um we need to be reminded who we are, you know, mm -hmm. where our roots come from, from the Aina, from here. This one is called Healing and Dreams um, on the North Shore of Oahu. Ooh. And Kaena Point, it's, it's um, Mai Kalehiki A Kalakau. Oh, yeah, from the sunrise to the sun setting, mm -hmm. that's when the kupunar 
are leaving, yeah, um, going to the other side, yeah, and and that's uh, cutting a point. We did um, repatriation, so I wanted to. We we actually walked three miles of this beach every morning when we were living on the North Shore, up in Pupukea for thirty eight years. We we're living there, and um, so I wanted to show the, the ambiance, the feeling of going there and meditating, and the reward is going and huvaya yeah? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. water is so clean and that whole current takes you right to kaena so our our first repatriation was from the smithsonian it was uh because i i was in hui malama in a kupuna ova ine that was uh because of hona kahua yeah so um mm -hmm. but that was the first um repatriation of kupuna we took uh at, at kaena that point yeah mm -hmm. And so, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to um, title this piece, Healing in Dreams. We need to heal, yeah, we need to go into our ike, mm -hmm. um, to healing, healing through the arts has, has played an important role in, in, um, in my work, yeah. Oh, here, <laughs> okay, so. This was um, from local Maika East Snakenberg on a DOE commissioned um, as artists. It was Michael Lani Kalehele and um, David Parker. I don't mm -hmm. know if anybody knows David Parker, but he did a lot of the portraits of the um, Kahikili, Nuiahumanu, and all the Ali'is. Now his son is doing a lot of the port portraits. Anyway, oh my God, I forget. I'm forgetting his name too. Um, Whoever's out there probably yelling at me, it's so and so. <laughs> Dave Parker's son, he's doing the portrait now. But anyway, <laughs> local my cut is Snake and Bird throughout these um, bilingual uh, texts to us on stories. And these are all written by, um, by uh, uh, Kupuna, um, our famous Kupuna. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Um, yeah, local my cut is sneaker, but the Kupuna that wrote all these stories and translated them at the museum was was um not Jenke, what was her name? Anyway, but we had to translate these um uh, these Sorry. stories into il illustration. It's gonna come to me. You had two I mean, stories. Yeah, I had two stories. Each of us had two stories. And the thing is, um you know, I, I the story that I had was um, uh, the story about the Ulu, and the other one was um, the Oopu story. Yeah, mm. I, I, the Oopu, and it was perfect because we didn't know what stories we were going to get. There was actually six of us, and the other three were non-Hawaiians. I'm not trying to sound racist or anything, but uh, <laughs> look, the thing is, they had hard time interpreting our our Hawaiian culture. Mm -hmm. They had to go look them up, and and the, their illustrations turned out and made our Hawaiians look really ugly. Whereas Dave Parker, he had the broken paddle, yeah, of Kamehameha, you know, that mm -hmm. whole story, and his Hawaiians were so handsome looking. And then uh, Imai had one of the uh, of the what is that the the worm, the caterpillar mm -hmm. one he had, cool, mm -hmm. yeah, up at Pu'upe Lua, you know that that whole story. Um, and and uh, we had perfect stories. The broken paddle was um, David Parker, mm -hmm. and um, uh, well, anyway, I, Kupuna, the very famous. I I'm so bad um, that I'm forgetting her. How dare I? Um, that actually put help translate and put these stories together and worked at, at the museum, um, uh, and 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 brought these forth, you know. So local Maika'i wanted this to be as a bilingual uh, book for the teachers. And that- oh, Kavena Kela, Kavena? Uh, Kavena Pukui? Yes, yeah. Mm. Kavena Pukui? She was on the Yes, side. yes. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, mahalo for that, really. And so before these stories never have illustration, is that what you're saying? They never had, yeah. They never had illust illustrations like this. Wow. We, we put our all into it. If you look at each page, I mean, each 
you know, the, mm-hmm. the, it's all pen and ink and, and we worked really hard on, on these. So yeah, I, I've done some children's books and things like that, but we, we really, you know, put our hearts into it and, and it, it, it comes natural for us, yeah? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, um, let me see. Yeah. So. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. This one mm-hmm. is uh, by, you know, Lo, um, Gaylord Wilcox and Tommy Holmes, Holmes wrote a limited edition of a, a core bound canoe book. And he, they wanted me to, I was the only one, I was like the only Hawaiian in that book. The rest was all these. It was Tom Kaufman. These, uh, yeah, it was Tom, Tom Kaufman. And they wanted me to um, write the, you know, or, or illustrate the Lele Wa'a, leaping off the canoe surfing. And I was the third artist that they had hired to do it. And I came up with it perfectly. And that's in that core bound book. But this illustration, Tom Kaufman, they wanted this uh, illustrations of what it takes to uh, gather the the uh, core um, uh, tree that they're going to choose to mm-hmm. make that uh, spiritual can- canoe available. They, you know, a whole thing had to be done by the dreams that this person will sleep at the bottom and see if they're. Uh, there's certain signs that would show itself um, in the dream, in the ike, mm-hmm. uh, a, a, a well-dressed, uh, girded uh, couple, then the tree is solid, and then they would look at the, even the elepayo too, yeah? Right. The elepayo would come out and tell them which would be the front and which would be the back, if it's rotten, whatever, so, mm-hmm. and then there's all the whole kupu and the oli, you know, so. I know, I the pua'a. <laughs> yeah, the pua'a right there, the pua'a yeah, there. Yeah, Oh, yeah, good. all of that is there. Yeah. All the, all the, uh, you know, yeah, the kinolao, kinolao. Or that thing, the whole kupu, yeah. Mm. So I did a, a few illustrations for that and how they felled the tree, what, what, um, you know, all the ceremony and everything that was done. Yeah. Mm. Well, this, this was um. <clears throat> done at the center for and I've done plenty oh my god we um we've done a lot of murals and this is just one of them that was done in 2005 but we, but prior to that I've done a we've done a lot of uh, uh murals in the schools for the children elementary uh, school children and um taught them you know um the their ahupua'a from the sea to the mountains of where their school was and and uh the first mural we did at Kainalu at on Kailua and on Oahu was mm-hmm. about 30 feet, six by 30 feet. And we showed showed them Kainalu, the marshlands. We took them uh, we took them on walks yeah, on excursions. And that was the their uh, the past, present, and future of their aspirations. Yeah. And that's we went to quite a few schools. We have enough to do uh, um, a calendar, but Hands on, and so this one was done at the. I this was done by me, and um, I had uh, Billy Field help me. We gathered pohaku, one, um, different elements from each island, all the way from Mokuoke um, uh, all the way to Neker and Nihua, uh, and gifts were given to wow. this fourth, and we did pule for every pohaku that we gathered and. Um, I, I chose models from the Center of Hawaiian Studies. This is located in Center of Hawaiian Studies. Um, and I used um, natural elements, <clears throat> asked permission, um, and, you know, um, and this is called the Kumulipo, because I wanted to be different. <laughs> Give me the wall and wish me well. I'm going to <laughs> just put it out. Um, um, and, and mahalo, I want to give my condolences to Onani K. Trask and to all their ohana, to Mililani, to Keo Nauna, and to, um, um, it's Kala Ann, the, my condolences to the loss of your sister, Haunani, because Haunani supported me with, with her support um, in doing these murals, this, you know, in support of all of us artists. There's eight of us. 
commissioned yeah. by the State Foundation Culture and the Arts. And we all had areas to do this in parts of the building. And they gave me this wall, uh, what is that, 15 by 24 foot wall. And they gave me the pico, Kamakuko Kalani, um, uh, and do a waterfall sculpture in the center. But um, I chose bodies, um, as you can see, as my models, several of them that I could fit in the in the mirror. I couldn't get everyone. I think I had about a dozen of them and I could only pick so many. And I wanted to have a contest um, <laughs> who could guess who was who and they would end up with a painting from me or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, you see Kamupua'a, you can see, um, you, you could see uh, Papahana Moku, um, Mo'ina Nea, and then Hina. You can see uh, um, Haumea under the waterfalls, and then, uh, oh, there's Wakea. Wakea's up in the clouds. You know, there's a whole storyline to that, and I have an a interpretive um, plaque over there. But um, unfortunately, you know, everybody kind of pick at, picking at it uh, all over these years, and I, I want State Foundation to call me back so I can go back. I'm the only one that can really clean it up and get it back to its nice shape again, even including the waterfall sculpture. So this is that it's really uh, pristine time, yeah. I actually added more in there. This is kind of an over. I, I actually added more vegetation, and because I, I was on the scaffold for months on end, and Took me a few years to do this. I had them remove where um, where Kamapua is. There was a telephone booth over there, <laughs> so I had them move, remove the telephone booth. All is there is the alarm, and the fire alarm. I said, "Oh my God, you got the telephone? Get rid of this thing!" <laughs> so, you know, these are obstacles. That's how I, uh, us artists, have to go through. You know, so mm -hmm. oh, yeah. gotta go. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh. Got a telephone booth. Oh, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and here's a uh, pula pula. This was really interesting. You see the the one is all sand art on the bottom base, and it's all adhered with mm -hmm. um, different ways. But the um, I dug out all the flat stones on the where the uh, kupu kupu ferns are in the back. And I put mm -hmm. I put fresh dirt inside there because it didn't. I said it had no ha. Yeah, it was it was just a drain. It was flat concrete, a drain over there. It was no nothing, and the wall was all um, mortared with white in between the stones. So I I, I bought in terracotta like alai, alai ula, mm. and, that. and then the kupu kupu fern grew thick over there. We planted that. We did um kupu ahu you know and just planted it and the and the spores connected itself to the waterfall sculpture and that's how i got that lay of kupu kupu fur on the wow. waterfall it just connected itself yeah it grew itself so um I, we found wow. we found all this pohaku this pohaku is very heavy the plate that's holding the phallic there's a phallic there there's a water it's a waterfall okay. sculpture i wanted to you know, the vai is very important. The whole pula pula, you got to have the, um, you know, the vali vali, you know, when it comes to procreating, <laughs> right? In order to have all these juices, how can you procreate? It could be, it could be uh, pele coming off from, you know, and, and, and nourishing the earth with her, with her hot vali vali, hot and boiling mm -hmm. vali vali. But whereas the vai, the vai has to come out of the phalic and procreate with the kohe, as you can see there there's a koe and so they are procreating on the plate which mixes the vale vale and comes right into the child fetus that you can see it's like a um that that's a fetus the white coral there it's at its purest form and i have an inlay in it and there's a pico it's feeding the pico and so when i do waterfall sculptures i like the sound i try to get that sound that sings into you know, it's not just putting a waterfall there. It's 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 how it it it's nourishing the soul, the your body, and and um it, it just all connects, yeah. And so, um, feeding the feeding the the fetus there as it's growing as your child as the baby, 
And then I wanted to uplift it on this um, round, you know, this type of um, pedestal, like a not yeah, form, but it's like it's more up, yeah. And um, making you feel proud of who we are. We need to keep the bloodline strong because we're getting watered down, and and we're becoming extinct, just like my bird paintings that I do. And so, you know, what happens to them happens to us. And so this, you see the um. The one, I have the different shades. That's all on it on the different type the green, the you know, it, and what it is, it's the kaneku, kanaloa, lono. You know, it's moving, it's circling, you know, going, and the direction is going uh, clockwise, going and moving and moving. And the kupu, it's um, to unite. The the kupu kupu is to to um, its unity and its growth and its and its living. We're a living entity. We're a living spiritual um, being, and and we're you know it's at, at its highest form of 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 life, and that's who we are as Kanaka Maoli. It's who we are Kanaka Wahini Toa. So I can go on and on. Oh my God! And on the side, on the side of that, I had all different. Um, uh, I, I actually put chevrons and I, I showed the uh, mano, you know, um, I continued on the side, digging out the sides and, and made each one and ili ili design on that. But, you know, time has changed it all. Um, it doesn't look like that anymore. That's jet black sand and everything. It's changed a lot. And, and they went in there with a power wash. The, the maintenance guys, they don't know. And they went kind of dig up all that and then it kind of ruined it and they overdid the um, fetus. The fetus is completely eaten up. So I just need to go in there and then try to, the kupu is, <laughs> the kupu's all gone. <laughs> this is at its pristine time. Away. <laughs> okay, my, I was commissioned by the Cent, um, Nature Conservancy back in the uh, 80s and um, they gave me a commission of 26 endangered wind forest birds. And they wanted me to do um, to do paintings of these. And, they, and at that time, I went through a lot of po uh, political uh, heartaches with this, this project, but you know what? I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have changed it. I, I, I learned so much, Kunani and I, we did so much on this project because um, our, our birds, in our native birds are found nowhere else in the world. We should really show reverence of and, and try to save as much as we can because what's happening to them is happening to us as a people, as a, as a really special race. I, um, this, is, this bird is called the O'u and they had to adapt you know, uh, some of the paintings I show by themselves and some of them I show as pairs, it's because the numbers are so dwindling that they, they're lifetime mates, yeah? And they're, um, I, I, I've done uh, lectures for commitment schools wanted us to go out in the field and, and talk about the birds, what's going on with them and, uh, and you know if their symmetry is off, if they get kakio like the bird pox, bird malaria, you know I I uh, it was really sad. They they um, they we're losing them really tragically, and there's no place for them to go anymore because all these other birds that they bring over to the islands are killing our birds off with with um, bacteria. They're invasive, and this is Kalalau on the island of Kauai. I had, um, I worked really, really hard. I did uh, all 26, actually 32 bird portraits. I did it um, 15 to 20 hours a day. I worked really hard on them and I tried to get as close as we can um, to, to see and to show. I wanted, I wanted it to be through Hawaiian eyes, through Wahine. It's the first time ever Wahine, is, uh, Wahine Toa has done this to, to through this, I'm not just, I'm not an ornithologist or scientist, but I put the feeling of their habitat, you know, and this is a male and female, could be vice versa, EO. And to see them, what was going on at, at uh, 
at the Waukeleo Puna and the geothermal and, and seeing what they were losing, their nests and then they crying, eo, eo, crying out, you know, and, and so sad. Um, everything was, you know, um, Papa Wai crying and, and so sad that a lot of the damage was, was being done to these, these pristine forests. And um, so I wanted to, I wanted to show them with, with respect and reverence that, you know, they're, they're lifetime mates, yeah. And so um, sad, it's sad. Uh, let's remember them, yeah. Remember them and try to help them. Okay. Yeah. So plenty, plenty to, to see and, and do. Oh, oh it, yeah. Yes. Kekonehiki, Ke Kekonehiki came to me. Um, this one, folks, was done in three days and three nights. He came to me in spirit. I don't know how I can explain it any other way, but his face, I was doing ancient pole fishing. And I put that aside because he kept coming, coming to me and uh, showing his face to me, showing his face. Who is this man? And and um, I had a Belgium sheepdog who was actually dying by the by the third night that I finished this kupuna. She was like, she was, it was time for her. Her it was her time. Like her sac, she was the sacrifice of this man. He telling me that the Hawaii lona that um, good things were to come. Yeah, and and I to, I let her go. I said go. In peace, my my dear Cassandra Van Cleef. That was her name. She was a Belgian. Sheep really? Dog. Yeah. And he came to me and he showed me himself. It's a Lua Pau. In mm -hmm. his eyes, all kupuna. And there's certain kupuna, all kupuna. But the kupuna that have attained the knowledge in this life with the ring of knowledge in their eyes. And my tutu lady had this in her eyes. She attained that knowledge. And that's what you take with you. What you learned in this lifetime is what you pass on to the next generation. You can't take, you're not going to take all your valuables and all of all the things that you, the material things with you. What you take with you is what you learned in this lifetime. And the, the crescent moon on the cheek is kilo kilo to be able mm. to, to, um, you know, as part of your essence. So he came high ranking because of uh, Lemiho Palawa, you know, Palawa uh, and the, mm -hmm. the hair and, uh, you know, and to show that he, mm -hmm. he came with high ranking and, and his kindness and, and the, the, the eyes, he came with so much knowledge and so much loving. I, I, I didn't feel no negative, spooky kind, ghostly. He came with so much like, it's time, Ipo. And people have stood in front of this painting and they got they get the message. He doesn't look at you, he looks through you. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's how he he he's he's come. So I I cannot tell you anything more, but that's how he came because he almost has this smile. And if if you recognize him, then that's good. That's a good sign. Kind. Mm. So I, I tried to do pieces that are in our past back in the 1600s or so. Uh, Laiahi, Oahu, you know, how we had the, between the taro patch and then the Japanese came over, they started making rice patties and all that kind. You know, even they even took our pohakus sometimes in, uh, and, and put them into their grave areas too. So mm. I, I want to show the, the pristineness that we had and the beauty of it was not just diamond head, you know, as Laiahi or Waikiki, you know, but how it used to look. Um, in fact, I'm doing a portrait by one uh, a kupuna that I'm telling her story at the Pearl. Uh, if uncle is, or family is watching this, um, I'm almost pow, <laughs> but I'm telling her story. And she was raised in Waikiki. She would tell me how she grew up with all the ponds and, and you know, the estuaries that went through there and 
just wow. find a how and you know be when when um Kaiulani lived there and you know running to running with her horse through there it changed so much they they landfilled everything mm -hmm. and took away those beautiful marshland areas it wasn't swamp land it was all beautiful pristine uh Kapiolani Park was you know there there's a lot of ponds fish ponds that are no longer you know there they really dredged beautiful Oahu so I think mm -hmm. they had, the island had one of the most beautiful um, fish ponds so, oh my goodness gonna run through a bunch of illustrations oh <laughs> my illustrations are good. i mean, have plenty yeah anyway i do multimedia i try to get you know touch everything um oh this one is pohen nani um i was commissioned to do a huge this is a the one behind me is a jicle but this one uh pohen nani um they wanted me to do a chapel but it changed into a lobby if you go to pohen nani by castle um by uh oh, kaneohe it's an elders, mm -hmm. uh, elders um, convalescent area. And the kupuna, this is what they see when they hala, the very last. They, they're not at the west end or end, but this is the place where they hala. And so this blue mist that's coming through Ko'olau, I have a, a poem about this. Oh, Ko'olau, my beloved rainbow of dreams. And it's the reflection of their life, taking that step where the kupuna on their ancestors are coming down between the canopy and to gather them, to take them home. Wow. Come with me, you know, come. Don't be afraid. Your reflections of your life is passing. It's time. Mm -hmm. to come. And so mm -hmm. the kahia is there. It's called Oh Ko'olau, my beloved rainbow of dreams. Oh, and this is oh, yeah. <laughs> this one is powerful. <laughs> yeah, this is like, so. Ooh, Kanari. Ooh. yeah, this is the uh, up at um, Pumahuka and Waimea Bay. And I think I was the first before even the book came out. I just took that challenge up, and and you can see the night marchers going up the cliffside. But you know, it's changed so much, and I just wanted to show that. You know, um, I mean, every different part, every island have Hokaipo, different places. Right. Like Manalo, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, every place. And I just wanted to show this. Uh, this was a museum piece. All my pieces are shown in the museum. Ooh. Uh, yeah, and we know the story of that. And so I did, inter I do interpretive signs for, um, this was one of them, Pumahuka, and um, you know what uh, Pumahuka was used for. I, um, and we did extensive research with um, Rudy, Mitchell. Rudy Mitchell down at Waimea. He worked down there, and um, a lot of I heard of a lot of our families, and some everybody said, "Oh, the burials are down there. Family burials are down there in Mahoe, all kinds." But um, yeah, well, I was I was honored to do this, and so I had to show that. Well, this is I better quickly show you the. Oh, I was actually that, a little. Okay. That, okay. Then, so yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, and, and so I show the um uh, yeah a new tower. There's different things I learned about that in detail, but this is a. Uh, I also created a Kuei Memorial Wall. Uh, piece. Uh, this is uh, uh, got inspiration, but we have blueprints. It doesn't really look like this, the uh, final, but uh, you can look that up. I think um, um, this is for our kupuna that signed the petition. We wanted to give them reverence and we did a, a mock-up at the palace. You can go to that next one now. Uh, we did a mock-up of how it would look and um, on there would be the plaques of every kupuna that signed that petition against annexation. And we wanted to do this on every island, but first, we, you know, at first, oh, oh, oh. there's so yeah. much. I, is it almost time? Continue. I were coming closer, but it's all good. All good. Okay, okay. Getting closer to the end. This is a, this is a, a sculpture I did, Kapakahi Kalo. I wanted to. This is where. <laughs> it's actually a waterfall sculpture i mean it's like what they're gonna do take our blood next you know so i wanted to yeah. show it all in kappa it is a play on the words of kappa, kappa. Kahi. 
copper. Oh. You know, the, dahi, color. Oh. the whole thing is copper. Oh, so, you know, they want to do this GMO uh, of our taro. I mean, what more they want, you know? So mm -hmm. the water comes out in between the leaves um, and it, they drip and it drips into a bowl, uh, like a puoro. And uh, I had Kunani, work, we did a collaborative piece because I told him, here, take this hammer, you can pound the, you can pound the bowl for me. <laughs> he said, what? I said, yep, get in ball, boy. <laughs> so that's a collaborative piece. <laughs> oh, okay. Upside down. Upside down. The GMO. The, of GMO. So. I love it. Yeah, it's a really nice piece. Oh, and this is a, I'm doing work for the people over here. Uh, Kupuna. This is a Take store, store that's the uh, passed down to generations. Yeah, I'm doing stuff like that. And this is one of the, uh, like, a, um, what is that, the true value kind of store, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I'm doing stuff like that. And just stuff that, that's the grandparents that started the store, but they passed away already. So it's just a remembrance of them. But can I say my song? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, you know, I, I gotta do this quickly, but uh, is there was was there yeah. some more? Yeah. There's, a couple There's a couple more. Just days. one oh, more okay. after this. This is the second to last. Okay, that one. Okay, the next one. That one is um. You can go to the la that that next one. Okay, this was um, this was passing uh Lele because when we were involved in uh Hui Malama, yeah, every path mm. that opens from the sun's rise, my Kalehiki Alkalakau was the center. That's the path that you leave. All the souls leave. It's setting. So think of, think of, and imagine that the double hawk canoe is taking all the, all of our kupuna that passed away. All we sing, all by aloha, and away, away, ke kala, and we're sending them off mm -hmm. to that horizon, and they disappear. And then all of a sudden you see the canoe coming, coming, coming closer and closer. And they're on the other side where all of our families are greeting us and, and giving us the lays. And, you know, so that's the concept that I wanted to give of this. It's called Uhane Lele. Yeah. Okay, I got I gotta quickly sing this song. I went right. Not only art. It's, huh? Yeah. Not only art. Okay, quick, because I would tell you. Okay, you never ask anybody how old they are. You ask him how young are you? So if you notice, I won't ask you how young you are. How young are you, cousin? How young are you? Me? Yeah. yeah. 65. Go ahead. 65. 65. 65. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Your name and all the monkeys in the zoo is boring, yeah? Well, Manu <laughs> <laughs> she came. She, they came over to Molokai. We had to go do this thing for these women that were having hard time, domestic, and and abuse and all that. She said, hey, Ipo, let's, let's do a birthday song. I go, heck no. I said, look, I, I'm an artist. I'm going to write one song, a birthday song. I came <laughs> up with three songs and I sang this one. And now I got it copywritten. I've been singing it since when I made 50. I'm 70 now. So it's, it's <laughs> hey, you never ask me how old they are. You ask them how young are you? So my song is called, Hi Young Yo. Hi Young Yo. <laughs> so, no get offended any Pakis out there or Chinese. <laughs> I'm not offending you, okay? But I found out a, a Chinese family called Hang Yang Yu. Hang Yang Yu. It's Hang Yang Yu. So I don't know. Anyway, I got this song to sing to you. It doesn't take much to listen to. So sit right down, kick off your shoes while I take you right back to how young you. Remember when you had your first birthday and things were simple and you loved to play. Then you went grade school and everyone came to celebrate your birthday and play some games. Then came the time when you felt you were getting too old, not wanting to celebrate. Give me a break. Well, forget it, my dear. Just be grateful you're still here. And Akua bless you one more year. Enjoy each moment and take care of your health because your it's happy, happy hours. birthday is loving yourself. You know this song is really cool because it doesn't matter how old. It's how young you <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, I, too. I translated Hawaiian too, but that. But Woo. I want to thank you folks for oh, I, I kind of really went off. <laughs> no. Oh. So much.
much to share. I mean, oh. Ay, mahalo, mahalo oh. for the key and for sharing the manao and um, you know, Journey. just to go through all of this, your work, so to hear from you, your ideas and your feelings that went into it is so. Oh, mahalo nui, Anake. <laughs> mahalo nui. What an honor. <laughs> we just was touching the top, the tip, the tip. Yeah. Not even. <laughs> so <laughs> much. <laughs> you got to come back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Shoot. Um, I, so <laughs> next week, um, we'll have Anakala. Anakala Kunane will be, uh, right there, Ala. <laughs> He'll be joining us next week on Monday night to share um, part of his Hana and his work and journey too. And I'm sure Anake will be with him. North. Um, just like our Manu lifelong mates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, mahalo Nui for joining us. <laughs> mahalo for all that you have done. And we'll see everybody next week on Kanakanology. Ahoy ho. Ahoy ho. Ahoy ho. <laughs>